welcome to my tutorial for the Easy Knitted Tea Cozy with a drawstring top, ideal for beginners. I've decided to do a tutorial after a request from a number of my subscribers and I decided on the Easy Knitted Tea Cozy because one I do is second nature without thinking and it's really easy to make. I've now decided I'll draft a pattern and put the pattern for sale on my Etsy shop. The reason it's so easy is you knit it in two halves and you sew it together. It's not knitted in the round. So, and you need just basic knitting skills to be able to make this lovely tea cozy. When you sew it together, you wouldn't know. It looks awesome. So this is the tea cozy we will be making in the tutorial. But a few things first before we get started. First of all, I'm not a professional at this. It's the first ever tutorial I'm uh, making. I didn't think I'd ever make one, but if it goes well, I may do a tutorial for a crochet tea cozy for all those crocheters out there. I don't have professional filming equipment, so I will endeavour to do the best job I can to show you how to make this tea cozy, but you will need some basic skills because I'm not going to show you how to knit and do stuff on camera very much. You will need to know how to cast on in any method. I use cable cast on. You should be able to knit rows and pearl rows, have the skills to do those and possibly knit two together. But if you don't, I will show you because that's what we do to get our eyelet roll for our drawstring top. You also need to be able to cast off or bind off relatively simply and be able to sew because you're going to sew two parts together. They're the skills you'll need to make a tea cozy. Now I'll be making this for a standard two to three cup teapot. This sample one I've done is for a one to two cup teapot. This particular teapot is standard. I've had this teapot for over 40 years. It was a wedding present and I've been married longer than 40 years and it is one of my favorites. So I won't be making it for this one. It'll be slightly bigger because this is a standard teapot for a three to five cup pot. This particular teapot, I bought at a charity shop, brand new. Now teapots are relatively cheap at department stores, between 10 to $15, but you can pick up some great bargains at charity shops and you're recycling and reusing. You, if you're concerned about using someone else's teapot, you can clean the inside with citric acid, which is available in your baking goods aisle at your supermarket. Some people use bleach, but I don't like bleach. I don't like the smell of it. I feel like it leaves a residual aftertaste for a while and it's not great for the environment. So I recommend citric acid to clean secondhand teapots. Now, teapots come in all shapes and sizes, tall, square. You wouldn't believe what people do to teapots. This particular teapot, I paid about $60 for from T2, a tea shop in town. You'll notice the spout is really high and it has this thing on the back. The beauty of this tutorial is hopefully we'll give you the skills to adapt it to fit any teapot you have. But if you want to go out and buy one, I suggest check out your local charity shops. You'll pick up some bargains. So guys, that's it. Follow along, watch this introduction and be ready for part one. Because in part one, I want you to have picked your teapot and your yarn. I will be using a ply of pure wool. I like pure wool for its thermal properties, but you can use acrylic or other any other blends. A ply is equivalent to three weight and DK, but hopefully if you want to use a four weight or a 10 ply or an Aran, you can adapt it with the skills I teach you in the tutorial to use that sort of weight yarn. I'm looking forward to doing this, so I'll see you in part one. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy making this tea cozy along with me. Okay, welcome to part one of my easy knit tea cozy with a drawstring top for beginners. You've listened to the introduction video and you have decided to make the tea cozy and follow my tutorial. You've organized your teapot, your yarn, and your equipment. For this tutorial, I'll be making the tea cozy for this teapot. It is a standard two to three cup teapot. 
the yarn I'll be using is Click Heat and Country A Ply. This yarn was given to me by my Yarny Fairy Godmother Janice. A ply is equivalent to three weight or DK, depending on where you are in the world. This is a pure wool yarn, 100% pure wool. I use pure wool um, because I like the thermal properties, but you can make it in acrylic, cotton or blends. I have made lots of tea cozies in different yarns and they've all turned out really nice. So to get started, say your teapot is very different to mine and you think, oh, I can't follow this tutorial. Well, you can. My teapot from the center of the knob, just move that out of the way, to the base is seven and a half inches. That's the length or 19 centimeters. So measure yours. Now, if you want your drawstring to finish under the knob, measure from the center of the knob. If you want it to finish over at the knob or whatever's on your teapot, measure from the very top down to the base and write that down. For the width, now we're making this tea cozy in two parts, so we will be measuring half the teapot for the width. So from under center of the spout to under center of the handle, measure right round as accurately, accurately as you can. Mine measures eight and a half inches, 22 centimeters. And I add an extra centimeter, make it 23 centimeters for the seams. There will be very small seams where you join the two parts of your tea cozy under here. Measure yours. Now cast on will be trial and error if yours is a different size teapot to mine. My, for mine, I'll be using my four millimeter knitting needles and casting on 42 stitches. Now for beginners, I recommend you use the straight knitting needles. It will make it easier for to, to review your work as you're progressing. I will probably use my four millimeter shy goose, but I will do a sample on straight knitting needles. Cast on method can be any method you wish it to be. Now, if your teapot is a very different shape or size to mine, you can still join us. This is a sample I have made, and this is what I suggest you do. This is 26 stitches, cast on. When you cast on, make sure you leave a 12 to 18 inch long tail for sewing the two sides together. So I've cast on 26 stitches and I have knitted four rows. Measure the width of that, then measure it against your teapot. Now, this is going to be too small for this teapot because it's finishing way over here. And if I'd cast on, say, more than 42, I'd gone to like 46, it would come around the other side and be too big. So it's a bit of trial and error. But once you've got the right cast on number for your teapot, then write that down so that you've got the details to make side two. And you will knit four rows. That's how we get started. I cast for this teapot, I cast on 42 stitches and I knit four rows, just backwards and forwards, finishing my last row on the wrong side. So when I turn it over to start row five, it's on the right side. So guys, get started. Work out what you need to cast on or just follow me. Please don't forget your 12 to 18 inch long tail to stitch the two pieces together. When you've done that and you're happy with your four rows of knit, come back and join me for part two. There won't be a lot of me knitting on this video because it is basic knit and purl rows and that would be too long and too boring. But we will start part two with the body of work and I'll show you what to do next. Come back and I'll see you then. Welcome back to part two of the Easy Knitted Tea Cozy tutorial. So if you're following along with me, you cast on your 42 stitches and you knitted your four rows. If you're doing your own thing, you worked out the number of stitches required, remembering to cast on an even number and you left a long tail and knitted your four rows. Your fourth knit row should have been on the wrong side and your work is turned over for row five, the right side. 
where we start the body of the tea cosy. Now, row five is just another knit row. You will just go along row five knitting all the way to the end. And this is the first row. Oops of the body of your tea cosy. Sorry, this yarn is quite um, fluffy and hairy because it is pure wool and sometimes some of them look a little long. This is my sample piece. It's smaller than the tea cosy we're knitting. It's just to show you what it should look like as we go along in each step. And yes, I don't have professional filming equipment. You're just going to have to bear with me and hope and I hope that you can work out what I'm doing so I'm just knitting row five all the oh, sorry all the way to the end it is difficult to knit with straight needles for me I haven't knitted with straight needles for a number of years and I feel like a duck out of water so row five was on the right side and you knitted it turn over row six will be a purl row. We will just purl all our stitches to the end. Purl all the way. And plus, I think knitting on camera, it's quite awkward. I'm quite shaky too, I've had too much caffeine. But you won't be seeing me do all the knitted rows and purl rows and because it is a basic knitted tea cosy and if you watched all of that it would take days and it would be boring. So just row six, purl all the way to the end. I did do a reasonable number of stitches for this sample. I did want you to see what the pattern of your tea cosy is going to look like for side one. Row seven, turn over. It's a knit row again, and it's on the right side of the work. So just knit all the way along. We may get some background noise from aeroplanes. We've had a week of no aeroplanes and no mail. We've been flooded in and it's finally good weather and there are a lot of planes pouring in today. So hopefully we'll get mail. Um, no mail for a week. Seems really strange. But it is wet season here and that happens. So row seven, we're just knitting all the way back along. Hopefully I'm not coming off camera too much and it's not too shaky. You, if you're an extreme beginner, you can always pause it and have a look. So yeah, I have to slow these last stitches down for extreme beginners. Just knitting all the way to the end. And that was row seven on the right side. We turn over row eight will be another purl row. So just purl all the way, each stitch to the end. And remembering that purl rows are on the wrong side of the work. Speed it up again. That might be one of my hairs in this sample piece which happens so yes we just purl this all the way to the end I'll try and I just split that one just sorry just go back I don't like splitting stitches I do like to fix them but like I said these straight needles I feel like a beginner <laughs> And we just knit, oh, sorry, I dropped a stitch. I'll just fix that up. So 
sorry, in my haste, sorry, it was purl. We just purl row eight to the end. In my haste to finish this row, I dropped a stitch, but I fixed it up. So there you go, row five to row eight. You're now ready for row nine, which is a knit row on the right side. So we started our tea cozy and we did our knitted border. Doing this is called garter stitch. We've started the body of our tea cozy here. I'll just use my ruler to hold it down. This bit here, where you have knit a row, purl a row. This is called stocking stitch. Now, if you're following me, you will do 40 rows from row five. And that will take you to just below your drawstring row. And you will finish on a purl row. So when you get to your drawstring row, your 40 rows plus your four will give you a total of 44 rows if you're following me. Now, if you're doing your own thing, you'll do, do the number of rows that is required to take you to your just below your drawstring row. Measure it, keep a count of number of rows and write it down for when you make side two. I'll do a few more rows off camera on this sample piece and you finish your rows to your um, drawstring row when you're ready to start your drawstring row and we'll come back and I'll show you how to do that on camera together. Welcome back to the completion of part two for an easy knitted tea cozy tutorial. So you've gone ahead and you've finished the required number of rows you needed for the body of your tea cozy stopping at the draw ready for the drawstring row so if you followed me you did 40 knit pearl rows which is this stocking stitch look this is my sample piece probably did more rows than i planned to because i was busy watching a, another youtuber <laughs> but anyway so now we're going to do the eyelets for the drawstring rows and hopefully you'll be able to follow this fairly easily so take your work and it must be on the right side. You knit the first stitch, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together. And this is what we will do to the last three stitches. Yarn over, knit two together. And boy, is this awkward on straight needles. Yarn over, knit two together. So yarn over your right needle, knit two together on your left needle, and repeat. Yarn over, knit two together. Yarn over, knit two together. Yarn over, knit two together. This is the way I do my eyelet rows. Some people may do them differently, but I like the look and effect I get with these, the way that I do them. So we're at our last three stitches. I'll just move that out the way. So it's yarn over for the, knit the last two together there, or those two, then yarn over and knit the last one like you did when you started. And that's what it will look like. Now your work is going to curl, but don't worry. When you finish side one, you can block it. Or when you stitch it together, you can block it on a teapot. But there you go. It will look like that. You then turn your work and on the wrong side, you are going to just purl all the stitches, including the yarn over. So can you see where the yarn has gone over? It's going to get buried. Just push it forward and purl that yarn over. Purl, push that yarn over forward and purl just by going into the front of it. Just through, just through there. Purl it. I'll show you again. Like I said, I'm not a professional at filming. So that's the yarn over stitch there. Just go into the front of it and purl it. And you will do this all the way to the end of this row.
quite awkward on camera. I'm still really shaky. Got to stop drinking that coffee. Just push the yarn over with stitch forward and knit into and purl into it. Sorry, they do cross over sometimes. Just push it forward, purl it, purl, push it forward, purl. So that's what your eyelet row for your drawstring is going to look like. All these little holes there. The next row is a knit row, so just go through and knit to the end. And this is on the right side. Just knit all the way to the end. I'll try and keep it on camera. This is frogged yarn, so it doesn't look as nice as when you first knit it up. But if I use this piece for a tea, small tea cosy, I will steam it and it'll look just as good. I'll use my steam um, garment press thing. So just knitting that row all the way to the end. And we're at the end of that row. So we did our eyelet row, we purled all the stitches, then we knitted. Turn our work over and now we're on the wrong side. That's what it should look like. But we're on the wrong side, but we're going to knit. Because you're now going to knit eight rows and have complete the top of your tea cosy with a garter stitch border like that so I want you to knit eight rows to finish the top of your tea cosy off when you have completed your eight rows and it doesn't matter what size tea cosy you are making eight rows will give you a nice gathered top you can do more if you wish this is the time you are knitting on the wrong side to get the garter stitch border across the top of your tea cosy. You will knit your eight rows and then you will cast off or bind off depending on what terminology you use. But make sure you bind and cast off loosely. Don't do it tight. When you are binding off or casting off on your ninth row, you will be doing it on this wrong side and that's because it will give you a nice finished edge so make sure that when you cast off to finish this side one that you're actually casting off on the wrong side okay so i want you to go ahead and do your eight rows of knitting bind off or cast off and you will have finished size side one of your tea cozy and this is what it will look like that's our bottom border that's my 40 rows of stocking stitch my eyelet holes for my drawstring my pearl and knit row and my garter stitch border for the top once you have completed side one Go ahead and make side two exactly the same. Now you can follow me and I am drafting up a pattern for this tea cosy. Or if you're doing your own thing, make sure you have all your notes. Now, one tip. Say you forgot the count the rows here or you lost count or got interrupted. There is an easy way for beginners to get a, a close enough accurate count. Lay down a ruler next to a stitch row on your work and count the number of V's going up. 
So like one, two, three, four, all the way up to it there, the row just below, your last row there. Count those and that will give you your number of rows fairly accurately. You can also measure it and get the measurement. So from the bottom, you've had four rows of garter stitch, 40 rows of stocking stitch. You've done a knit, a purl and a knit row, your eyelet row, and you've got eight rows with a bind off on row nine for the top of your tea cozy. And that is side one. Please go ahead and make side two. Part three will be showing you how to put it all together, gather it up and complete your tea cozy project, how you can dress it up, how we can change it with color variation. But once you've learned to make a basic tea cozy, you will be hooked and want to be more creative. Come back and watch part three when we finish this project off. Hi, welcome back to part three of the Easy Knitted Tea Cozy tutorial. The finishing part where we put everything together to form a tea cozy. So you have knitted two sides exactly the same and you're ready to join them. This is the point where you can block them individually. I haven't for, um, because I like to put mine together and then block it on the teapot I'm making it for to get a nice shape. Uh, you're going to need some sort of cord to put through your eyelid holes to draw, as a drawstring. Me, I have for this particular one, I have knitted an eye cord. In the past, I have um, crocheted cords or I have bought cord or I have used ribbon. It's entirely up to you. I do suggest to enhance your tea cozy to do a contrasting color to make it look nice. But yes, your cord should be about one and a half times the length of one side. Um, unfortunately, do I have a tape measure? Yep. That's about, for my tea cozy, it's about 33 centimetres or 13 inches approximately. You don't want it too long because it's going to hang down a bit and you don't want it hanging past the base of your tea cozy. At this point too, you can also um, decorate or embellish your tea cozy you can sew on little motives like this this is a little heart I have you can stitch it onto about the center of your teapot um, work out where it's going the center is I've also got this little red heart if you've got two of one particular um, thing like two little red hearts put one either side it always looks nice but this is when you can embellish before you put it all together and decorate it and make it look really interesting. So to join, you're going to put wrong sides together and you're going to use your wool needle using the long cords you left cast on. Now, I'm not going to show you how to sew it. It's pretty basic, but I will tell you what I've done with mine. For First of all, you must make sure all your pattern like your garter stitch lines up the top of the eyelet holes line up and the garter stitch line up and I suggest you just pin it there and pin it up here to get it all lined up you're going to make a seam about one stitch length wide either side so stitch width so that's a stitch that's a stitch that's where my seam is just in there it's just a small seam you do not want a huge big seam same at the top. So for the bottom of mine, I've made, I've stitched about three centimeters, just using a back stitch, blanket stitch, whatever stitch to join it to get a seam like that looks like that. And the top, that's about um, an inch, three centimeters. And the top for my teapot, it's two um, inches or um, five centimeters down to there for the. And what happens there is you're forming a hole for your handle or spout. Now the edges will curl in like that, but that's the look you want on the inside because it gives it a nice finish on the outside. You will join both sides the same if you have a standard teapot. If you don't, you're going to have to try and pin it 
and fit it around your teapot to get an idea of where things should go, how much you should sew for your teapot, like that, sort of. Okay, so yes, pin it, trial and error. Don't sew it until you're absolutely sure. That's where you want it to sit, just about, about just below the rim of the lid on the handle side and a bit further down on the spout side. With mine, it work, where I've done mine, it works out fine. I've made them both the same. So you go ahead, stitch your tea cosy together, make your eye cord and or get your cord and thread it through. Now, I'll finish that one later, but I have made another one earlier. This is one for a smaller teapot that I have made. See, I have just drawn it up and put my eye cord at the front with a bow with some fringe. This is a crochet cord. It's up to you where you want it. If you want it to sit off to the side, if you've put some decoration or... I don't suggest the spout side in case it falls in... Um, in line with the spout when you're pouring tea, I always suggest you can put it off to the side here, thread it there and tie it there. But this is the same yarn, just a different colour and for a smaller teapot. Now, if you remember, I did small sample pieces and said I might turn them into a tea cosy. Well, I did. This is another cord that I crocheted. Sorry, I had to pause the video. A plane was going over and making a racket. I crocheted this cord and fluffed up and fringed the edges out just to make it a bit different. Um, I probably should move it to over here somewhere so it sits sort of off to the side. I've probably threaded it in the middle, but then I've decided I'm going to decorate it with this little crocheted flower. This is a manufactured, it wasn't hand crocheted by me, it was machine done, something I bought at a craft shop. So as you can see, Tea cozies from this pattern can be made to fit any size pot. It's trial and error. This is a one cup teapot. This is a one to two cup teapot. And when I finish the um, pink one, it'll be a two to three cup pot. You just follow the way I said, and it's a bit of trial and error. And as you can see, you can make them look really lovely or just have it plain. If you're making up for a gift for someone and you're not sure about the distance for the handle and spout, you can sew it to just below the eyelet row, row on the top and you can sew it just above the garter stitch row on the bottom and leave big openings. And as you can see, the reason it, I like it to curl in, it gives it a really nice finish around the openings. Now, if you're worried you're getting a big gap around the handle and you want to close it up. This is a different pattern I do, but I'll show you what I do with this one because it's quite an unusual teapot with a high spout and a funny shape. I have sewn a button and made a little loop thread and, th and it threads under the handle, just like that, out of the way. Yeah, you can be as inventive as you like. You can make cords if you crochet. But guys, that's it. Your easy knitted tea cozy finished and ready for use or ready for a gift. They make great gifts. People do like them. Thank you for watching the tutorial and bearing with me. I don't have, as I said before, I'm not a professional and I've made my best attempt to please some of my subscribers who've been asking me the last two years to do a tea cozy tutorial. I have enjoyed it. It's really um, got my enthusiasm going for the year by really planning it out. Now, I have drafted a pattern for this tea cosy that I'm going to sell for charity. I have decided this tea cosy pattern will be gift of love tea cosy because it will be a gift of live love for someone and the profits I make from the pattern for um, a certain length of time will go to charity and you'll be able to buy that pattern on my eBay, uh, sorry, Etsy shop and I'll leave links in the description below. In the description below will be links to lots of useful things to help you with your tea cozy like making a knitted eye cord um, 
they'll just be recommendations for you to follow if you're an absolute beginner and don't know how to do it. So guys, thank you once again um, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you do make a tea cosy from this tutorial, please post it to Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag witchpeacecraft. Or you can email it to me and let me have a look. I'd really love to see if you um, how you went and if you enjoyed it. If you found it easy or not, leave a comment below. Because I got so enthused about this, I'm thinking of doing a crocheted tea cosy for beginners tutorial. But it may take me a while. Um, thanks, guys. Until next time. Bye for now.